Hello everyone, how are you? This is Dina, welcome back. I'm still participating in the 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. I'm not gonna hit 24 hours. <laughs> I'm unfortunately gonna have to take less than that. Anyway, it's called Friends, and you know this is for my friend Cheryl that, that uh, collects Raggedy Ann and Andy. And this is supposedly going to be for either Christmas or her birthday in March, looking like March. So I have very little to share with you. I was gonna stitch for the minimum of 120 stitches. And as it turned out, I hit 186 because I wanted to finish the, the color that I was working in. And if I were to put in a picture before right now, this is what it would look like. <laughs> because you're not going to really know the difference unless I point it out to you. Uh, 186 stitches didn't do a whole lot for this picture. Um, what I concentrated on were two more colors here, and this is now complete down to the hat, and this is complete down to her head, so the little girl's hair is right here, um, but I finished that down to here down to the, the two dolls. The next thing I'm gonna work on is actually my sister's present. And so I'm gonna try to do it for the rest of the day and get as many hours in my uh, 24 hours of cross stitch as I can. And I will um, be back when I have something to share with you. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and I am wrapping up for this project on my uh, 24 hours of cross stitch. I decided to work on uh, my uh, sister's uh, birthday present because I knew I had lots of time that I was gonna be devoting to this next project and I would like to get some work done on this large project. So Stephanie, you'll need to look away now because I'm gonna be showing it off. So I started on this today and I'll show you uh, where I was. I had this motif right here stitched. So I started about right here today. I got both of these done. I had this section done and I had one length of that done. But I put this in today, this little part in, finished that up, this and all of this. So if you'll notice, we're at that border there is a very thin border that's gonna go down here, but I'm gonna wait until I've got everything finished so I know when I place it that I'll be giving it plenty of room in case I get off somewhere down the wet line. But I'm very, very happy that I was able to pull that in my rotation today and get it done all the way to the bottom on that side. So now I have the rest of this big motif in the middle to do, the um, individuals that'll fit in here, and then I can go back over to the other side and put all the small items that like similar to what you have here over there. But major accomplishment today, I feel, major. Feel really good about that. So I actually put in 1,266 stitches today. So good progress for today. Uh, Stephanie, you can look back now and uh, watch the rest of the video. <laughs> oh, happy stitching, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is Monday, August the 12th. And I have a bit of an update for you been able to start my Magical Stitches homework today. And I had an early start of my day today. Our son had his final appointment this morning at seven o'clock to um, see his physician so he could be released to go back to work tomorrow. And I'm happy to say that he is well on his way to doing that. And so being up so early and out and about, I decided to get started on my homework because 
there are a lot of prompts for homework. <laughs> it turns out this week that School of Magical Stitches has um, owls. We are doing our owls, and so we have to pick seven, well, we have to do seven prompts for just the core owls, and then we have to pick three electives from five options. Um, so if you're counting, that is a total of 10 prompts. And you can either stitch 100 stitches for one grade, or you can stitch 200 stitches for a better grade. And if you do all of them at the 200 level, you get bonus points for your team. So you can guess what I'm trying for. Anyway, the first two prompts that I worked on this morning, I could do on the same um, whip. And so I went ahead and just did them both, and now I'll share them with you. But the very first core um, owl that we had was astronomy and the second one was charms so in my case I used my 12 days of Christmas with Santa on it for both of those because Santa has to use the stars to navigate all around the world on his special night and in addition to that he has to use a charm to make the reindeer and the sleigh fly but a lot of people don't know this, but he also uses a charm to warp time, to give him enough time to get around the world in one night to all of the boys and girls' homes. So I felt like this more than met the requirement for both astronomy and charms. And so I did um, 237 stitches for the first uh, one for astronomy. That's just where the it was an easy place to stop um, my thread and to count. I always go to my thread runs out. And then for the second prompt, charms, I kept working on the bag. I was working on his bag today. And I did another 218 stitches for that. Now, the beautiful part about it is I was able to use that 218 stitches on the second time for another prompt, which is in Cheryl McKinney's group. We had to do, um, we're doing prompts for Betty Boop's birthday. And the cartoon that I was working on, or the prompt I was working on, was um, the fifth prompt where you have to stitch on something with a star in it. And of course there are stars all in the background of this piece. So I was able to count this for that as well. So here's where I got to. There was none of the bag except the strap stitched before. So I've stitched the opening here on the front and the side panel and most of the decorative berries and leaves across um, the side of the bag. But it'll be my next thing I pick up on to try to finish that bag. And then once I finish the bag, I can do the stars, you know, another couple of rows of stars, or at least one, uh, next time when I need to stitch all in blue. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. Here's my total progress so far. I did notice while I was working on this that last night I um, had been working also on another piece, and I thought, you know, I've got two fairly large pieces that are getting, you know, pretty well down halfway. And I haven't done any of the back stitching on it. And I hate to wait to the end and have a week or two of back stitching for each one. So when I get this one finished to the page break, I think I'm gonna stop and do back stitching and get all the back stitching done down to the page break on this one, because I'm almost there. And I think that'll help me when it comes time to finishing this up to only have back stitching on the bottom half because the, there's a lot of back stitching in this piece. So that's my progress on 12 days. You can see how much back stitching is in that piece, all in the beard and face and the clothing, and then all amongst those 12 days emblems in the bottom of his coat. All of it's back stitched. So there'll be a lot of that. But I'm finished for today with this piece, and I will start on my next prompt for the um, School of Magical Stitches um, 
which is a defense against the art dark arts and I have the perfect piece to do for that and as it so happens it also works for one of Cheryl's prompts too. So I hope to get it done today. And if I do, I'll come right back and I will uh, share with you um, what, what I was able to accomplish on that. Hi everyone, I'm back. This is Dina and today is still Monday, August the 12th. I do have another update for you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was working on the next prompt in the School of Magical Stitches, which I mentioned to you was going to be uh, the Defense Against the Dark Arts, um, which is we're taking our owl in that. And what better teacher, new teacher, than a Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher who is an angel? So I pulled out my nativity and I am utilizing this for that prompt. And I totaled 218 stitches. I was working uh, again on this border. When I started it, I had this square done and the top row of the border done. So I came down and I worked on this bottom row, making room for the angel wings and started the square over here. So I'm gonna try to work my way down and across this time. So, let me show you where I got to. It is a pleasure to stitch on this. When I picked it up and I started working on it, I remembered, I thought, oh, this is that one that I have such a hard time making myself do because it was so difficult. And then I started stitching on it and it was like, oh, this is so nice. The stitches are laying so pretty and I can see what I'm doing. Um, I can see those little lazy daisies in that top border already and the uh, eyelet stitches in between them. So I'm hoping that this will remind me not to put this one off, um, that it's actually going to be very pretty. And I am going to possibly even park on this one because the wings on this angel are so confetti heavy. They are amazing. And that is one of the areas I got lost in on my first one and I got off somewhere and then had to fudge those wings. And there is back stitching all down those wings to make those feathers stand out. So you can't be off, you need to do it right. So I think I'm gonna wind up parking, doing it a row at a time, all the way down through that angel's wings we will see. This will be good practice before I do my haid. Anyway, that's my progress. 218 stitches and that prompt is met. There's also a prompt in Cheryl's group that this one meets and that is to stitch on something with a box or a square. This is a box. This will be a square and I've stitched on both of those. So my 218 stitches will also count for that prompt as well. Can you notice that's crooked? <laughs> I noticed it today when I pulled it out, so I'll have to straighten that out before I work on it again. So there's the nativity. That's my work on it for today. And I'll be putting it away for, to begin uh, work on my next prompt. Don't know that I'll get it done today. I'm about to go to the gym with my husband and work out a bit and then when I get home I may be back at it so you may get to see one more prompt today I don't know but I'll be working hard so happy stitching to you hello everyone it's so good to see you back this is Dina and today is Wednesday August 14th well, it's been a busy day. <laughs> um, just a little bit of a life update. Our son actually did get clearance today to go back to work tomorrow. And so he's pretty excited. <laughs> His work is too. <laughs> um, so that's all good. And then tonight, my husband and I have choir practice. So I have been trying to get a little stitching done in today in addition, in addition to a little bit of housework. So um, I was rewarded today because I had happy mail. I want to share it with you. 
If you haven't seen the bags that Rika King makes, then you really need to do so. I was watching one of her floss tube videos and that's the House of Stitch and Stash. And she was showing some of her fabrics and some of her bags that she'd been making. And she just recently started making these to sell and you just let her know uh, off on her video if you're interested and she'll email back and forth with you. But I saw a fabric that she shared that I fell in love with and it has sewing bobbins for the uh, our thread and I do bobbinate my thread and it had uh, thimbles and beautiful birds for the spring and summer. Anyway, I messaged her and she had enough fabric to make another one and she did and I got it today. And Rika, it is gorgeous. Anyway, I want to share it with you. Look at this. This is perfect. It is really perfect. I love project bags anyway to keep my projects in, but I have several that I have, and you've seen them, you know, that I that Miss uh, Cheryl made for me out of some of my own fabrics. This was one of them, and I love them. I just took the project out of here to put another one in it. This was holding Pretty Little Tokyo, and I've decided I don't have to stitch that right away. So I'm freeing up this space for something else, and that's why this one is laying open. It's waiting for a couple I'm kidding up, which will be in a different section. Ah, uh, but the difference in size, I think you can see, I needed a bigger bag for a larger project. So that kind of gives you a comparison. It is not an overwhelmingly large bag, but it is substantial and I really, really like it. The fabric is quilted and it has a wonderful weight of batting in it. It's, you know, spongy feeling, so I know it'll protect my beads and everything that goes in it. I love this contrasting fabric and I think it absolutely goes perfectly. I'll show you the back. You can really see that fabric there. And another thing I love about it is Rika put a handle on it because she knows we like to take our stitching with us. And I I just love it. It's the only one I have with a handle. And now I'm going to think I need one on every one. <laughs> so I love it, Rika. Thank you so much. I'm going to message you privately too, but uh, this came in today. And I will tell you guys, the quality is stellar. Uh, and I sew, <laughs> so I can tell you it's good. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have to do this myself and and get all these corners mitered as neatly as as Rika has done. And um, the vinyl is a very heavy weight; it feels wonderful in there. So, um, if you want to give her a try, I highly recommend it. Um, and I will tell you too, this is so cute, Rika. Uh, my husband brought my package in today off the porch and I can't share it with you as far as the address and stuff but I want to just share with you sort of the handwriting that was on the entire package. Let me see if I can fold it where you can just see my name. Look at that handwriting. Isn't that beautiful? And Rika sent me a lovely card with it. And her handwriting, it was a thank you card. And this is her handwriting. Beautiful handwriting. Uh, and thank you for the card, Rika, it was very sweet. So again, I got the privilege of meeting Rika at StitchCon and we had a ball just getting to meet each other in person for the first time. And I so look forward to seeing her again. Um, and uh, Rika, don't be surprised if I don't order another bag from you soon. <laughs> Cause I did like it that much. So I wanted to share that with you and then tell you my, um, my latest stitching plans for today. I've been working hard on homework for the School of Magical Stitches. And last night, I was just watching Floss Tube as I was stitching away and I saw 
a floss tuber, Stephanie Kahn, uh, Miss Oso Crafty, was kind enough to do a floss tube and speak directly to the homework for Magical Stitches this week because it's very difficult. It's We're taking our OWL exams, and so the prompts are very specific to the movie. So specific, I didn't think I had things that would gonna match very well and I was being creative and, and weaving my story like I normally do to make things work and after watching Stephanie's video I wasn't sure that we were allowed to do that this time I'm not sure what was different but I sensed it was different and so I messaged Stephanie and I asked her to clarify um, to look at what I had to offer uh, for a prompt and she didn't think it was gonna make it and I will tell you, I was so sad. I had been stitching for, you know, a couple of days by then. Today is Wednesday, so I'd been stitching Monday and Tuesday all day, as much time as I could get in to try to meet prompts. And I had thought I had met about four or five of them. And then I'm maybe learning I haven't. Not that any of the stitches are wasted, they're not, but you only have a week to get this done to get the points for your team, which is, you know, what I'm trying to do. But anyway, um, I kind of groused about it to my uh, hubby and my son, you know, about thinking, well, this one, this is supposed to be fun and this one's being really strict and I don't think I'm gonna have anything that fits. And that's kind of sad to me. And I, I almost lost my stitchy bug over it. I really did. I quit stitching last night. Just said, okay, I'm, I'm done for the day. And then this morning, I got a message from Stephanie and she said, oh, by the way, don't you have one that has a big sun in it? I was trying to match something for astrology. I'm sorry, ast yeah, astronomy. And um, I wrote it down, astronomy, yeah. And I didn't have anything with, you know, stars or moon or uh, constellations or anything like that. And I didn't think I was gonna have anything to fit. Um, and Stephanie said, don't you have something with a big sun on it? <laughs> oh, yeah. The sun is a star. I forgot about that. Uh, so in the light of day, I was able to rethink about what I was matching. And with the information from Stephanie's video that gave me some points in the right direction, I was able to move some things around. And the stitches that I'd already done might not have counted for the one I thought they were gonna count for, but I could make that whip count for something else. And so I didn't lose any, and I was able to re-establish, um, you know, post my pictures in a little different place, and hopefully they'll work. Uh, if something doesn't count, um, that's okay. At least I think it does, and so my joy of it came back, and I was enjoying it again, which is important to me to enjoy my stitching. So I have made one constellation in order to come up with something for transfiguration. I decided that I would do a new start. I don't like to do a new start just to meet a prompt. This exception, however, I think you'll understand. I'm doing the monthly series by Hands On Design and I had already done the monthly series for all September for this month. So I thought I was done until next month until I needed to find something for transfiguration. So if you look at October, you'll see there's a ghost there. And also there's a little creature hanging out in that O for October. He's transfigured into the word. And so that's what I'm gonna use for transfiguration. And so even though this is a new start, this is a start that I've been doing one a month anyway. And I'm trying to finish the whole series this year. So I don't think that's too terribly bad. Anyway, um, tomorrow's a very busy day. I have uh, the beginning of a Bible study at my church, a ladies group that I uh, participate in. And uh, we are starting up a new uh, book study tomorrow. And so I will uh, be taking part in that. And our pantry's in full swing. It's our two weeks to man it. And I do have a dear friend who's gonna run it tomorrow so I can go to Bible study. But I'll be there Friday 
And uh, then I'll be back there Saturday packing bags again, um, you know, to pack up for the next week of service. So a busy, busy time. But I am trying my best to get homework done uh, before the weekend. And uh, I think I'm going to get there. I'm certainly going to try. We have car practice tonight, so I may not get a whole lot more stitching done today. But I'm going to try to get a start on that October. Um, and the good thing is, it will meet another prompt. I forgot about it. I have a prompt in Cheryl's group to stitch 100 stitches with black. And the tree trunk in this one is black. And so that'll count. So I will, I'll hit the last prompt on the one I'm trying to complete for Cheryl as well. It's been great stitching this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I would like to make a little bit of an announcement. I alluded earlier to the fact that this is my 100th episode and that uh, I'm gonna do something special for it. And so I have decided that I'm going to do a giveaway and just to say thank you. And so I'm gonna pull that together and sometime during this video, you'll see a little blurb where I'm showing you uh, what I'm gonna gift and you tell you how to register for it. So keep, keep stay tuned for that and I'll talk to you soon. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina. I am here with uh, the details of my celebration for this 100th episode of my Floss 2 videos. Thank you so much for helping make that possible by watching, by coming back to visit. It means so much to me that you do that. So I've been trying to think of something interesting to do. I went back and tried to look at some old snippets of videos to pull forward some funny moments or things that were quite poignant. But unfortunately, during the course of the last um, three years, we've swapped computer systems. I've gone to a new editing system because of that. And all of my older videos that are out here on YouTube, I don't have at home anymore. So, because that computer is dead. And I may have some in a backup somewhere, but I thought, well, rather than look backwards, I would rather look forward with you in hopes that we continue to share time together, uh, that we continue to share our stitching together. And so today I am gonna share with you a thank you and then allow you to participate in helping to shape a little bit of the future of this channel on what you might see on this channel. So two things. One, I have a giveaway and there were all the rules apply. Please don't mention giveaway. Um, please don't say free or gift, you know, all of that. And be 18 years or older or have your parents permission to participate, all the usual things. Today's a little different in that if your name is the one chosen, you get to pick which pattern you want in the giveaway. I have four to choose from. I'm going to show you all four. And then I will ask you in your comment to tell me your preference so that if your name is the one that comes up, I know which one to send you. Uh, when I get your mailing address. So if you want to participate, here's what you do. You listen to the four patterns, jot down which one you want, and then in your comment, you just say, I would like to stitch that one. Okay, easy enough. So here's what they are. The first one is a uh, part of the whimsy that I like. I have stitched it, you've seen it on my channel. It is witchy washy. It's a raise the roof design, and um, I've stitched it. It's up on my board, my chair rail up there. <laughs> and um, I'm ready to pass the stash if anybody might be interested. The buttons are not with it, but you can order the button pack. So you can get these same buttons if you want them. So you would want to stitch the witchy washi if that's the one you prefer. 
The next one that I have is Jeannie Bean's Halloween Sampler, also by Shakespeare's Peddler. Now, I have not stitched this one. This was uh, one that I got either as a gift or on a freebie table or something, and I thought I might stitch it, but I haven't. And as I'm looking through all of my patterns and what I want to do, I noticed that um, I have other Halloween things I'm going to be stitching, and this one seems to be very popular. So there's, a, I think, a sale even going on right now. And I thought, well, one of you might want to participate in that and not have this pattern. So if you're interested in this one, then what you want to do is just say you want to stitch the Halloween sampler. Jenny Bean's Halloween sampler. The next one is a lavender and lace. It's called Fallen, Fallen Roses. This was given to me um, by someone who thought it would make a good companion piece to Nantucket Rose. And I think they are right. It would make a beautiful companion piece to it, but I'm not going to stitch it. And I have so many more other um, either uh, lavender and lace or mirabilias that I would be holding this for so long before I would ever get to it that I would like for someone else to enjoy it that really wants to stitch it. So if this is your choice, please stay that you would like to stitch lavender and lace, fallen roses. Either one of those is fine. Just let me know that's the one you want. And then this last one I just finished recently. It's a prairie schooler. It is the Needle's Eye. I stitched the one for the Cross Stitch Ladies. And I did this as a sal with Connie G and she stitched this pin keep first and now she's working on this. But if you would like to stitch the Prairie Schooler, the Needle's Eye, it does have all three of these patterns on it, then that's the one you say you wanna stitch. So any one of those four, I'll go over them really quickly again, just so you have a chance to review now that you've seen them all. Witchy Washy, the Halloween Sampler, which is Jenny Bean's Halloween Sampler, Fallen Roses by Lavender and Lace, or The Needle's Eye by Prairie Schooler. So just let me know what you think in the comment and uh, section below, and that will put you in the drawing for this uh, little thank you present. And I will uh, give it until, oh, let's see, today's about the 15th. Um, let's say till the end of the month, till August 31st, and I'll draw the winner. Fair enough? Okay, so that's that portion. Now comes the part where you get to help shape a little bit of what you see on this channel. One of the things I wanted to get feedback from is, are you enjoying the little extra clips that I put in every now and then of my um, area that where I live or my husband's hikes? I get lots of positive comments on it, so I'm thinking that you do. But I would like to ask, it is a cross-stitch channel mostly, but if you don't mind uh, that or if you find that to be uh, a pleasant addition, uh, would you let me know? If you, if you greatly object to it, tell me um, that and tell me why, and that will help me determine a little bit better what I include. That's one thing. Now, the second thing I want you to help me decide is what I might stitch on in the coming year. I've been through my basket so many times and actually have made a list twice and assigned what month I was going to start certain things. And I keep changing my mind. So I thought back, one of my favorite things I've done in the past is that I shared with you a group of patterns that I wanted to stitch and I had you vote on which ones you would like to see because you have to watch it as it as it goes through the whole process. So 
I would like to share with you a few of the ones that I'm having a hard time deciding between and have you vote and tell me which ones you think uh, you would like to see. And I will let that help me determine which ones I'm going to put in the lineup for next year. Okay, I really appreciate your help on this. I have several um, groupings here, um, four in fact, that I would like for you to vote on your favorite that you would like to see me start in the coming year. Uh, as I'm doing some planning, um, I'll, I plan this early because I start looking to see what I have in my stash and then I make my Christmas list for kidding these things up for next year. So there's some method to this madness. But the first is a patriotic uh, category. And I've got three choices for smalls that I would like to stitch at least one of them next year. And I'm having a hard time deciding which one. So I hope you can help me with that. The first choice in the patriotic category is Itty Bitty America. And it is uh, Twisted Threads pattern itty bitty America the second one in that category is a Lizzie Kate y'all seen this a lot lately land that I love it's a little snippet of hers and the third choice you've also seen quite a bit is the early Americans it's Betsy Ross So again, please let me know which one of these you like. Itty Bitty America, Land That I Love, or Betsy Ross. So choice, these three choices. Help me pick which one of those I wanna put in my rotation to try to get done next year for, for July 4th. The second category I have is a Valentine's Day uh, small. I'm working on Simply Love right now and I hope to have it finished before February. So that would uh, free up a spot to try to do something else that's for Valentine's Day because I have very little for Valentine's Day that I've ever stitched. So I have two choices here. The first is called Love Birds, and it's by The Drawn Thread. I got this off the freebie table at StitchCon. Two little birds in there, or three? Two. And a um, heart, looks like. Love Birds by The Drawn Thread. Or I have February, this must have been a monthly season, and it says hearts for thee in February, and it's a shepherd's bush. I think they're both precious. So which one should I do? Love birds by the John Thread, or February? which is a year in season, in this, a year in stitches, but I don't have anything except this one. Again, this was off of a freebie table. Both of these were off the freebie table at StitchCon, both of them. So one or the other, Lovebirds or February, a year in stitches. Then I would like to do another piece for my sewing room. I had gotten a, the, an idea that I wanted to stitch several things that represent my hobby and put them in my sewing room. And the last one I did was Broderie au Puri, which you've seen it framed. I finished it at, uh, right after StitchCon. So I have two choices now to start on next for my sewing room collection. And the first one is a Mill Hill kit, a stitch in time. I picked this up at a retreat. I bought it at Dixie Darlin when I went to um, Katrina Boyd's uh, Cross Threads retreat there in Sevierville, Tennessee um, last year. I thought this was lovely. And I've done Mill Hill kit um, before and given it away. And I haven't done one, I've only done one to keep 
here, and it's a Christmas one. So this would be um, a meal hill for, for my sewing room. And the other one is a design by Ursula Michael, and it's called Let's Sew. And I do sew, I have in the past, I don't do as much now, but all of this has meaning for me. So please vote between the Mill Hill, A Stitch in Time, or the Ursula Michael, Let's Sew. Let me know which one of those you like for next year. And then I have a pretty big decision to make. I have some large pieces that I'm working on now, and as I finish them, I'm hoping to par down the number of large pieces I have going at a time. I already am gonna be starting another Teresa Winsler. Uh, we will be starting it next year. We already have a date, it's gonna be a sale. I'll give you more information on that in, in a little bit, but um, I would like to have at least one Mirabilia going at all times. And so right now I'm working on Seaside Kingdom, but I anticipate finishing it next year. So I would like to have my next Mirabilia lined up to start. And I thought it might be nice to start a bit of a smaller one that's not quite so large. <laughs> so. I have two that I'm trying to decide between that I have in my stash. I want to stitch both of them. It's just a matter of which one do I want to start first. I'm having a hard time deciding. So the first one is gathering eggs. And I'm gonna do that on a fabric that's called Highland. It's a 32 count Lugana. I think it's gonna be beautiful with it. It's a little bit lighter than the one you see, but it is modeled with a little bit of the blue and the green in it. I just think it'll be really pretty together. And the other one I have is a lavender and lace. I kind of put all my lavender and lace and my mirror is in the same category, but it is a uh, winter rose. And someone's stitching this recently, I just saw. And I'm just gonna do it on a, an antique white Lugana because I actually had put this with a rose fabric, like a little pale rose, thought it would be pretty. And then I realized that it pops so beautifully because it's on that white. And with so much of that light blue, you know, in the background, I think white is a better choice. And so I've selected to change it out to white. So please let me know what you think. Winter rose or gathering eggs. Out of those two, which one do you think I ought to start first? So those are the categories I need your help with. And I think it would be fun as part of this a 100 episode to have you help me uh, by voting on some of these things and uh, then I will work to kit them up the ones that are the winner and again um, why don't we say that I'll take your votes through the end of the month and um, then I'll see what the tallies look like and I'll come back and and share with you what wins <laughs> And that'll help me uh, continue to work on plans for next year. I have been toying with um, Mania. I've been toying with what to do for Mania. And I've had several ideas, and one of which was a totally Christmas Mania, where I started nothing but Christmas designs, because I have so many Christmas designs, and I would like to stitch a lot of them. And then I thought, that's gonna to be tough if I start 20 new Christmas designs. I won't have time to stitch anything else. <laughs> and then I'll be stitching Christmas all year, and I'm not sure I wanna do that as much as I love Christmas. 
because I have other things I want to do. So um, I'm gonna rethink that, and I don't think I'm gonna do a full Christmas mania. So now it's back to the drawing board for that, and uh, who knows, I may be asking for your input on that as well. But for now, if you will vote and let me know what you like in these categories, that would help me tremendously. And again, I just appreciate so much you being here. I appreciate you coming back and watching my videos and commenting and, and letting me know uh, your thoughts on what I've been working on, your suggestions and your ideas when I ask for them. You're so kind to do that. And it's been a, a wonderful way of meeting people that love what I love to cross stitch. And I actually consider you my friends and I've actually made friends in this group and it's just been such a fabulous addition to my life. I can't imagine my life without FlossTube, without viewing you, watching all of your videos, without meeting you at retreats and stitching with you. And uh, I just wanna thank you uh, for making this such a fun part of my life. And again, I hope you'll come back and visit more. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe and uh, if you like what you see. And um, in the meantime, happy stitching, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Tina, and it is later in the day on Thursday, August 15th. And I am back to discuss with you the completion of two more prompts for School of Magical Stitches, which means I've been working on a whip. So I started working on my electives today. And I found a whip that I felt would meet two electives. The first one was arithmetic, And the reason I think this meets it is that there are distinct areas in this piece that are left blank for beads and the math problem that we were presented with in our owls was to determine exactly the area of the spaces that are left blank for beads. So that is what I'm using that one for, for the math exam. And then because this one has spheres in it, little white spheres, which show better on the piece than the pattern, but I will, I will remind you what the pattern looks like. Here it is. But there are little white spheres all amongst those beautiful pink variegated silks. So let me show you where I got to today for my two prompts. For the first prompt, I did 206 stitches. And what I did is I came over here and I stitched this motif, this little motif that sets this one up, did that little piece there, and I think you can see it on here, the spheres. Those spheres are important because those are actually the fortune teller's um, uh, glass ball that they use for their looking glass, and so I stitched three of those. And then um, I came over here on the second half and continued on down here and did this entire motif here for this leaf. So I almost have the two sides perfectly even. I have this one little motif to do here and they will be completely balanced as I move forward. I will tell you something, this one right here. I had to stitch part of those 267 stitches twice. Yep. I came down here and got off somehow counting and had this little piece about two rows too low. And didn't notice it until I had come up here and stitched to about right here in the motif. I had to frog all that out. And you know, with silk, you might as well just cut it and go because it, it's not, it's gonna fray. So I had to just destroy that, take it out. And so I had to frog it back to here. I got this even, and then I was able to go, go, go. So part of those 267 stitches, I stitched twice, but didn't count but once. So I actually stitched a lot more, <laughs> but I have enough for the prompt, so I'm good. And I'm really pleased with how this is looking. I think it's turning out really, really pretty. And tomorrow night, we're gonna do something very unique and at least it is for us. And I'm gonna try to film a little of it and put it at the end of the video for you. But tomorrow night is 
uh, something my son dearly loves. It's the food truck uh, Friday night. And so at one of our lakes here in town, where the Olympics actually, um, the 96 Olympics had rowing at this, this was built for the 96 Olympics. And they still have rowing competitions there nationally. Um, uh, so <clears throat> when it's not rowing, then they use that venue for other events. And so this Friday night, tomorrow night, they're doing a food truck Friday night. And they bring in some pretty neat food trucks. They'll have different, each food truck has to be different, has to be a whole different ethnic food. And um, then they have small booths set up for community type information. And they have uh, vendors there, I think, selling wares and things like that. It's almost like a little fair. But the star of this is the food trucks. So tomorrow, we're going to have dinner at the lake at the food trucks. So we'll get to go and see, you know, what new foods we want to try. And uh, I'll have to see what I can can figure out what to eat there. But my son's already scoped it out. He's been a couple of different months. They have it once a month. And he has scoped it out for me. And he's he knows exactly where to point me in the right direction for me to get something that would, you know, go with, with what I'm trying to eat right now. So I'm looking forward to that. It starts at 5 o'clock. My son gets off about 5.30. And so we'll probably have, as soon as he gets home and gets in comfy clothes, gets out of his work, you know, scrubs, then we will head over to the food truck. And I'll try to get you some footage of that. I think it would be interesting. And I'll share it with you. And if you don't want to see it, I'll always try to put those things at the end. And you can skip them if you don't really want to participate. And the other thing I'll share with you is I got a phone call today from the Framers. And they tell me that my Flowers of the Holy Night is ready to be picked up. So I'm going tomorrow, and I'm hoping and praying that they did as good a job on this one as they did on my Nantucket Rose. And we will we'll see. <laughs> and hopefully, if they did, I'll be bringing it home with me tomorrow. And that means that I should be able to share it with you. And then, because it is the 15th of the month, uh, I will try to see if I have enough footage, if it, if it goes long enough, uh, to make an interesting video, then I can go ahead and put it up for you and you'll get to see it right away. I'm so excited. I can't wait to share it with you. Um, so, tomorrow is volunteering, picking up my framing, going to the food truck fair, and then Saturday is packing groceries, you know, for next week's um, service at the pantry. So sometime in there, I've got to get the stitching done on my final homework assignment. <laughs> so I'll be busy stitching any moment I have, and I hope you are too. Well, here we are. Today is Friday. I was able to pick up my Flowers of the Holy Night and bring it home. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I want to give you a little bit of a close-up, but I do want you to see, in general, the piece as a whole. And then I have a fabulous little story to tell you. Let me get in a little bit closer so you can see the color of the mats and how beautifully it matches that pale green and the red. And then the frame. I just think that is a gorgeous frame. It is a bit substantial, but this is a substantial piece. You can see all of the beading, all of the beautiful variegated silks. It is just a standout piece. So, I picked it up before I went to the food pantry today and I was able to show it to a few people there that, that know that I stitch and now they want to know if I'm going to stitch a piece to be um, donated to our auction at our church. Our Sunday school class has an auction at Christmas where we donate items 
for each other to buy, and that's money we put in the budget of our class to aid um, families that are in need throughout, throughout the year. So I have been um, sort of commissioned, as it were, to do that. Um, anyway, there's Flowers of the Holy Night. This certainly will not be put in the auction. This is for our home. But I do, um, I do want to tell you a sweet story. I had this framed at Michael's. This is my second big piece I've had framed at Michael's because of a sale they were having at the time. And when I picked this piece up originally this morning, I, I will tell you that during the stretching process, some of these dark green threads that I had to use two strands of floss, of course, for the variegation to work. You can't do a loop start, or I didn't think it would look as well to do a loop start. Some of those little tails of those two threads that I had uh, secured behind the back were a little bit longer than I realized, and when they stretched this piece, little green tails were visible underneath the white linen on all of these darker green um, leaves in the corners all the way around. And it broke my heart. I almost cried because you know you cannot allow your threads to be seen. Uh, and behind white linen, that is, that's, you know, it's very easy to see the threads. So I asked the gentleman that was waiting on me. He's actually the same guy who helped me pick all this out. He was so proud of how well it looked. I showed him what I was speaking about and I also showed him that there was one place that it looked like one of the pins that they had used to pin the piece had come too close to the surface and you could actually see it under the fabric and he agreed. So he took the back off and I got a little needle, a little tiny petite 26 needle and I went through the fabric right on top of the phone core and I moved those little tails, the few that were showing, back up under, tucked them back under that stitching. And he fixed the pin and he put the back back on it for me. And he was glad to do it. And now I'm ecstatic. <laughs> so it is beautiful. And my faith in my local Michaels is still there. And so I can, uh, I can tell you it's been another good experience. Thank you for letting me share this beautiful FFO with you. There's so the pop and the dance is free. If you wanna come along, come along with me. I said, hey, good looking. Watch oh, got good. How's about put something up with me? How's about good?